Hi everyone, my name is Courtney Sherrick and I am from CFB Gordon. I'm going to be guiding you through a yoga class here today. Just make sure that you do have a chance to read through the disclaimer just based on virtual PT due to COVID-19. When you are ready, just meet me on your mat and we'll start off in Shavasana down on your back. Just making sure that you have a quiet place as well as your own music if you'd like in the background as well as my recording. I will not have music during our yoga class. Okay, so to start just lying down on your back here, closing your eyes, allowing your legs to heavy into the floor, allow your arms to relax down by your side. And just allowing yourself to heavy into the mat here. Reminding yourself that there's nowhere else to be and nothing else to do but to be here on your mat at this time. Feeling your ankles heavy into the floor. In the back of your legs, the glutes. Begin to notice the curvature in your low back where your spine lifts up off the mat. And just taking your shoulder blades, squeezing, to, squeezing them together and wiggling them down your torso, creating space between the shoulders and the ears. Allowing the palms to relax down by your side, making sure that there's no tension in the fingertips. And just notice how the fingers curl naturally in towards the palm. Gently begin to rock your head side to side on the mat, gently massaging the back of the head Noticing any movements or stretches within the neck. And then just finding stillness here. Begin to allow the face to soften. The space between the eyebrows, the cheeks heavy down towards the floor. And maybe even if you're comfortable, allow the mouth to open. Allow the tongue to relax on the bottom teeth. Completely just feeling the body heavy against the floor, against your mat. Almost as if your body is disappearing into quicksand. And just notice if there are any places within the body here on the mat that are speaking to you and that you might need to be mindful about today through your practice. Maybe sending the breath there throughout the practice or taking any modifications that you need to during today's practice. Begin to focus on your breath and feeling the belly rise and fall. With each inhale and with each exhale. Feel the breath move up the body, starting from the belly, feeling the ribs lift and then feeling the chest lift. And as you exhale, following it all the way back down, the chest falls, the ribs fall, and then the belly falls. And keep trying to follow that, just like a wave. Allow yourself to control your breath as it moves up towards the chest and following it all the way back down towards the belly.
Now try to take that breath and make it even longer here. Maybe counting to four or five as you breathe in and as you exhale. Just seeing if you can slow that breath down just a little bit more. And as you inhale, really feeling that belly expand, feeling that chest lift up off the floor. And as you exhale, completely emptying the belly, drawing the belly button down towards the spine. Taking one last final deep breath here. And then just very gently wiggling the toes and the fingers. Gently bringing the arms up overhead for a full body stretch, lengthening through the arms and the legs. And then as you exhale, just allowing the arms to heavy up overhead and allow the legs to relax. On your next full body stretch, I want you to try and interlace the fingers. And then as you breathe in, you're going to press the palms out to the side, taking a deep breath in. Once again, just lengthening through the arms and the legs here, but adding in that clasp, pointing the toes maybe even. And as you exhale, just relaxing down on the mat. We're going to do that one more time. Make it the best one yet. When you're ready, deep breath in, lengthen, just waking up on a Sunday morning, and exhale, release, keeping the arms up overhead, let's take the hands and just walk them over towards the right side, and you're going to bring your legs over to the right side as well, coming into a C shape with the body. And just taking a couple breaths there, through it, feeling it through the side body as you breathe in and out. Getting that stretch through the side body. Seeing if you can even creep them over a little closer. Good, and gently coming back to center. And then just gently walking the hands and the feet over to the other side here. Again, lengthening through the body. Seeing if you can find that breath on the outside. Still feeling that rib cage expanding and lifting. Taking one last deep breath in here. And then coming back to center. Good. And we're hugging our right knee into our chest here. Hug it in nice and tight. With our right leg tucked into our chest, we're going to begin to follow our breath. So as you breathe in, let that leg fall away from you. And as you exhale, let that leg fall in closer. So just following at your own pace. Inhale, let that leg drift away. Exhale, draw it closer into the chest. One last time here, letting it fall away, and then exhale, hug it in. Beautiful. We're switching legs now, so on your next inhale, bringing in the left leg, and then as you exhale, releasing down the right. We're going to do the same thing here. When you're ready, just finding your breath. Inhale, letting the left leg now 
fall away, and then as you exhale, hugging it in. Once again, just following this at your own pace, your breath, not mine. If it's for you, just still allowing the eyes to stay closed as you go through this. Listening to my voice rather than following along. Again, if you are a beginner, it does take time and that's okay. As you further your practice through yoga, that will change. Good, going one more time here. Inhale, letting it drift away. And then as you exhale, hugging it back in. Beautiful, hug the right knee in to meet it. And just giving both knees a good hug into the chest. Maybe rocking side to side there. Allowing the knees, or the thighs rather, Come to the outer edges of the rib cage as you rock side to side, just gently waking up the lower body, the hips, massaging that low back, finding stillness here, keeping the legs hugged in. As you exhale, I want you to tuck the chin into your chest and lift the head up towards the knees. Keep the chin, chin tucked here. Holding and then exhale, lower back down. We'll do that one more time. Again, if it's not for you, just leave it out. Go back to rocking back and forth. But when you're ready, exhale, tuck the chin in. Lift the head up to meet the knees. Pausing there for a moment, feeling that stretch along the back of the neck. Then exhale, releasing down. Good. And when you're ready, we're going to come back to the lower body and we're coming back to the legs. As you inhale, I want you to reach both legs up to the ceiling. Just a gentle hamstring stretch here. So we're not asking too much of the hamstrings. We're going to bring our focus to the feet. And I just want you to begin to draw some ankle circles going one direction. And then the other. Maybe point and flex the toes here. Still not asking much from the hamstrings. Just letting them stay heavy. Good. As you point and flex your toes here, really want you to think about the toes, not just the ankles. So as you point your toes away, feel them scrunch up. And as you draw the toes towards you, feel them spread apart. Good. We'll do that a couple more times here. And just focusing on just the toes here. Good. Last time. Good. Let's hug the knees back into our chest here. When you're ready, arms are going to open up into that T here. Or if you like, you can come into a W, so the goalpost arms. And as we exhale, we're going to let our legs fall over to the left side, coming into a supine twist. And our gaze is going to come to look towards the right. And as we come into this pose here, I want you to take your legs and just spread them apart and allow them to heavy. If you do have a pillow handy, you can place it between the legs if that makes it more comfortable for you. Or a block. And with the upper body here, really just allowing the shoulders, both shoulders, to heavy into the floor. Again, whether your hands are up in the goal post position or out straight into that T position, seeing if you can find the back of the hands against the floor and just letting them relax there, opening up the chest. Three more deep breaths here. And on your next inhale, 
Bring your legs back to center. Taking a breath, or maybe two. When you're ready, exhaling, releasing over to the other side. Legs heavy, and the head points and looks in the opposite direction once again. Arms are staying where they are. Still allowing both shoulders to heavy into the floor here. Allowing the knees to relax. Again, whatever is comfortable. If you are finding any discomfort here, like a stretch sensation, not pain, really allow yourself to just heavy into that, sending your breath there almost. Allowing the body, telling the body that it's okay, it can relax, it's not in danger. With that, two more deep breaths here. Once again, on your inhale, coming back to center. When you're ready, we're going to hug our knees into your chest here. Wrap your hands underneath the thighs, so just underneath the shins here. And if you like, you can begin to rock forward and backwards, slowly gaining some momentum so you can come up all the way to seated. If that's not for you, then just come on to one side and press yourself up to seated and meet us in tabletop there. Once you find yourself into tabletop, so your hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips, I want you to begin to just do some spinal flossing. So we're coming into mad cat and cow. So again, as you come into cow, draw the belly button down towards the floor, eyes look up to the ceiling. Good, exhale, press yourself away and tuck your chin. Find cow. And as we go through these two movements, try to make it feel like a wave sensation. So you're fluidly going from one to the other. Trying not to take a pause at either range of motion there. And almost feeling like you're taking your tailbone between your legs as you come into that mad cat. And as you come in to cow, feeling the shoulder blades squeeze together in that torso. Again, allowing the eyes to close here, just allowing yourself to be immersed in the movement. Just gently finding stillness. I want you to take your left hand and just flip the palm up towards the ceiling here, just warming up the wrist, giving the forearms a little bit of a stretch here. So if it's for you, you can begin to sit the hips back towards the heels. For some, we might just be staying right here in this position. Again, this can be a very intense stretch for some. You begin to make a face like you're biting off a lemon. You've gone too far. Good, just gently sitting the hips back. And if you like, you can begin to just gently rock it forwards and backwards. Again, very gently here. Any pain or serious discomfort like that, then back off. Good, and just gently releasing the left hand, coming to the right, same thing, flipping it over. So the palm is on the, or facing up and the back of the hand is on the mat. And just gently sitting back. As we go through our practice today, we'll do a lot of things on one side and then go to the other side and do it. And as we do that, just remembering our body isn't balanced. It's not the same on each side. So treating it like a brand new exercise when we do take it over to that other side, that opposite side. Good. And then if you haven't already, just begin to gently rock back and forth with that right wrist. Good. Gently coming out of that as well. 
And we're gently going to sit back onto our heels here. So I want your feet to be flat on the mat and just gently sitting back if you can. Again, if not, leave the hands slightly out in front. If you can find that tall spine, that is great. So we're sitting on our heels here, knees are together. And then what I want you to do is either stay here or you can bring the hands behind you. Fingertips can point towards your heels or your toes rather, or they can point away, whichever your shoulders offer. And if you are reaching your hands down and back, roll the shoulder blades up. If it's for you, relax the head back, maybe open up the jaw there. And staying here for three more deep breaths. And if you don't feel anything in this pose, that is okay. We're stretching our shins here, bringing our feet into dorsiflexion. It just means your ankles aren't tight there, your shins aren't tight. Maybe you're feeling this in the chest if you're rolling the shoulders down and back. Good. On your next exhale, slowly roll yourself back up. Come all the way back into your tabletop. We're going to come back to the feet. Here, I want you to curl the toes under as if you're going into like a quadruped, as if you're going to go and uh, crawl, lifting your toes or your knees up off the mat. So knees are still together, toes are curled under here, and then same thing, gently sit the hips back. So here we're going into a fascial stretch, so stretching the bottom of our feet, our toes as well, and just gently walking yourself back. Again, some of us might stay here with our hands still on the mat, which is okay, but if you can, see if you can come up to that tall spine. Good. So again, all my toes are on the floor here. Feeling that stretch, we're going to hold it for three more deep breaths. In through the nose, out through the mouth. If you're making a face like you bit off a lemon, come out of it. One last deep breath in. And exhale. Beautiful. Gently make your way out of it. Shake out those feet if you need to. When you're ready, you're going to curl the toes under, lift yourself up for our first downward facing dog, and just gently pedal out the feet now, alternating pressing one foot into the floor followed by the other. And keeping this class fairly restorative, we're not going to do a lot of standing. Just a small little sequence here. So still just pedaling out the feet. And then we're gonna just come into a traditional downward facing dog here. So finding stillness, feet shoulder width apart here. And I want you to just relax the head between the arms. Feel each finger one by one press into the floor. Feel your arms. Press away from the floor as well. Feel those shoulders press away from the floor. Feel your hands screw into the floor, drawing the elbows to face in towards the center. Deep breath in. Good. Lower body now. Slight bend to those knees. Heels are lifted up off the floor here. I want you to think about sending the low belly towards the tops of the thighs. Still pressing yourself away. Lots going on here. One last deep breath in. Beautiful. And as you exhale, begin to walk your feet to your hands. Good. Hands come to the shin. Inhale to a halfway lift. A nice flat back here. Squeeze the shoulder blades behind you. Send the sit bones back. Once again, deep breath in. And as you exhale, round through the spine. This time, as you inhale, gently roll yourself all the way up. Leave your head for last. Beautiful. Inhale, I'm going to face the camera. Inhale, reach the arms up overhead and exhale them down by your side. Good. Three more times, just like that. Inhale, reach up. Exhale down by your side. 
Inhale. And exhale. Last time. Inhale. And exhale. Good. Just the same way we came up, I want you to tuck the chin into your chest here and slowly roll all the way back down. Vertebra by vertebra, coming all the way back into that forward fold. So making sure your feet are shoulder width apart. Hands can either reach for your shins or the floor, whatever is available there, or maybe the knees or the thighs. And just allow the torso to be heavy here. Coming into Ragdoll, reach for your opposite elbows, bent into the knees here, and just allow the torso to be heavy. Maybe just grip gently swaying side to side, bringing gentle movement to the body. Torso is heavy. And then if you can, gently begin to straighten out, maybe just a little bit of the legs, again, still keeping contact with the thighs and the belly. Three more deep breaths. Hands find the floor. Gently walk your feet back out to that downward facing dog. Taking a moment there, reset. Feeling that stretch through the ankles, the back of the legs. Feel the upper body activating, pressing yourself away. Relaxing the neck. Deep breath in and exhale. Gently releasing the knees back down towards the mat. From here, you're going to take your right foot and step it up to your right hand. Beautiful. Curl the back toes under here if it's for you. We're going to inhale, reach the hand up overhead, coming into a T-spine twist. Exhale, release it back down two more times. Inhale, release, reach it up. Again, we're not reaching it back, we're reaching it straight up as if we're stacking our shoulders. Exhale, back down. Inhale, last time, reach up. Exhale, release back down. Good, lower the back knee if it was up. And then just begin to heel toe that right foot out to the side, coming into lizard. So if you're taking your left hand, and if you like, you can bring your right hand and pressing that knee out to the side here. Allowing the big toe to lift up off the mat. Allowing the left hip to draw deeper down towards the mat. Getting that deep stretch along that left hip flexor. Staying here, or if you like, draw that heel towards the glute and then see if you can reach for it with your right hand. Again, if you can, draw that heel towards the glute Roll that right shoulder back and bring your torso up towards the ceiling here, getting a little bit of a uh, thoracic twist through that mid back. Still allowing that right knee to open up to the side. Allow the left hip down towards the floor. Wherever you are, two more deep breaths. Gently releasing that back foot. And when you're ready, gently stepping that right foot back. And then coming over to the other side. So again, what I said before, treating each side like it's a new stretch. Curl the back toes under if it's for you. Hand closest to your foot, reach it up to the ceiling. T-spine twist. Exhale back down. Two more times. Inhale, reach up. Exhale back down. Last one, inhale, reach up, exhale, back down. Take that back leg down. Again, taking that foot, the left foot out to the side. Let the big toe lift up off the mat here. 
And then you can gently bring your hand to the knee, just gently applying some pressure, guiding it to the outside of the mat. Big toe lifts up, allowing the right hip down towards the floor. And then same thing if it's for you, try it on this side, draw the heel towards the glute, and then let your hand reach for that foot. Roll that shoulder back here, finding that little bit of rotation. Now allowing that right hip down towards the floor, left knee is still opening up to the side. Beautiful, two deep breaths here. And when you're ready, as you exhale, gently releasing them. Good, bringing the knees back and bringing them together. Let's come into a narrow child's pose as we sit the hips back on our heels, bringing the forehead down to the mat. And our arms can either reach out in front like a traditional child's pose, or we can bring our hands down by our side, palms face up to the ceiling. Staying here for five deep breaths. Allow the torso just to relax over the legs here. Feeling the belly press against the legs as you inhale. When you're ready, gently peel yourself back up to tabletop. Once you're into tabletop and making your way down onto your belly. Elbows underneath your shoulders. Finding space pose here when you're ready. Press the hands into the floor. Take the feet a little wider than hip width, especially if you have low back issues. Take the feet nice and wide here. When you're ready, press the hands into the floor and lift the chest up. Deep breath in here. Draw the chest up towards the ceiling. Good. Exhale, lower back down. Now we're going to do that one more time, but this time I want you to draw the chin in towards the chest as we come up. So inhale, press yourself up to space. Good, and then draw the chin towards the chest. Keep pressing into the mat here with your hands, and then either swaying the head side to side or just coming into that traditional sphinx pose. Good, and then on your next exhale, releasing down to the mat. Good, reaching the hands up overhead. We're going to come into swimmers just to add some activation to that posterior chain. So what I want you to do is just lift the right hand up off the mat, followed by the left leg, just to hover here. Head can stay rested onto the mat. Exhale, release back down other side so left hand reaches up followed by the right leg so again just enough to activate the glute exhale release back down so just follow your breath in here inhale release up exhale down so opposite arm opposite leg inhale lift exhale down inhale lift exhale down beautiful following your breath here Again, that leg isn't going up to the ceiling. Just want to feel the glute activate. 
Toe, toes can point away, activating the feet. Feel the shoulders activating as you lift the arm up off the mat. One more each side. Beautiful. Relaxing back down onto the mat. Hands can come underneath your shoulders here. This kind of press yourself back into a wide legged like child's pose. So hips are wider, or sorry, knees are wider than the hips here. Sit the hips back. And then just let your chest fall between the arms. Hips settle down towards the heels. Chest falls between the arms. Taking five deep breaths. When you're ready, gently make your way up. Bring your legs behind you on either side, coming to a seated posture. Legs out in front, and then gently making your way down onto your back once again. And just allow the feet to be planted on the mat here. And just windshield wiping the legs left and right. Feet come shoulder width apart, legs find stillness. We're going to come into one hip bridge here. So when you're ready, inhale, lift the hips up off the floor, pausing at the top here, squeezing those glutes. If you can, bring the hands underneath you, find that clasp. Maybe wiggle the shoulder blades together here, squeeze the shoulder blades, lift the hips up, feel that stretch along the chest here. Deep breath in and out. Last time. As you exhale on your next breath, slowly rolling down, releasing the clasp. Beautiful. One last stretch here today. Hug your right knee into your chest here coming into half happy baby. Take your right hand to the inside of the right leg here, and then you're gonna reach for the pinky side of your foot. And as you do that, you're gonna draw the knee in towards the armpit, and the bottom of the foot reaches up towards the ceiling. And your hand reaches for the pinky side toe. Either staying here, if you like to deepen the stretch, especially on the left side, let that other leg come straight. Still drawing the right knee in towards the armpit. Three deep breaths here. Last breath. Hugging that knee into your chest. Maybe just giving it a gentle rock side to side. When you're ready, switching sides. So hugging the left leg in. Hand comes to the inside of the leg and then reaches over the shin for that pinky side of the foot. Again, drawing that knee in towards the armpit, 
when the sole of the foot presses up towards the ceiling, staying here or relaxing that right leg down towards the bottom of the mat. Finding that breath, allowing gravity to do the work here, gently adding some pressure. Again, if this isn't available to you to reach for the pinky side of the foot, then just reaching behind the hamstring as well, still guiding that knee in towards the armpit is a great alternative. Two more deep breaths here. Gently releasing, hugging both knees in. Hands come on top of the knees. Gently begin to draw circles, guiding them one way. And pausing and changing directions. Noticing any sounds. Any clicking if you have it, which is okay if you do, everyone does. Good, and bringing them in for one last hug. And then when you're ready, just releasing one leg down towards the mat, followed by the other. Coming into a comfortable position here. Again, if you do have a pillow or a blanket comfortable here for Shava Shavasana, I welcome you to grab it, get yourself comfortable. And then once you're ready, allowing the eyes to close, coming back to the mat, thanking our body for guiding us through that practice and allowing us to be capable of doing that practice. Bring your mind back to the mat if it has begun to drift. Allowing yourself to relax here. Nowhere else to be, nothing else to do. Taking two deep breaths in from the nose and then exhaling through the mouth. Once again, if time allows you to stay a little longer on your mat in Shavasana, I welcome you to do so. Namaste. Thank you for joining me in this practice. Have a great rest of the day.